So the rack is in place after the last video, uh, having a few teething problems with it where the shelves are not potentially the strongest. Um, so I might need to reinforce these and get some marine plywood and paint that rather than these MDF boards, which should have a bit more structure to them. But in the meantime, they are strong enough for now, as long as they don't get wet. So I'm just gonna scape this little tank here on the right hand side. This is going to be a 30 cube tank. Um, even though it's 35 high, I'm only gonna fill it up to 30 centimeters. That's because I'm gonna be entering it into a 30 cube contest as well, um, and obviously produce content for my channels. I'm hoping it's gonna be home to a wild, um, well, a wild better, but it's captive bred um, by someone locally to me. Uh, it's hopefully gonna be a wild, I keep saying wild, hopefully it's going to be a better in Bellis. Um, the other alternative is that I move the licorice grammies from this top tank in here temporarily, and I rescape, start the sort of the process of rescaping some of these tanks on the rack on my left because I'm not totally happy with their appearance. They were always designed to be more sort of just fish tanks rather than scapes. But I, as I'm sort of starting to, to get more into the way the aquariums appear, I'm thinking about potentially redoing these at some point. So there are the two options. If I can manage to get hold of the better embellis, they're gonna go in here. I will need to find some sort of lid for it because I broke the one that came with this tank before I get the fish. But that's the plan. Anyway, I'm gonna escape this tank and yeah, hopefully it goes well. Um, I do have a microphone on today. It's the first time using it. Uh, it arrived this week. So please do let me know at the end of this video how the sound quality compares to my previous ones. Is it a lot better than what I was producing before or whether there's still some improvements I need to make. Um, so yeah, do let me know how it sounds because to me, to be honest, I don't, I'm always editing videos with other background noise and I don't really ever notice the, the quality of my voice. Uh, I don't really like listening to it, to be honest. So this tank has been used before and it does have some marks on the glass. Um, I've tried to get it off with a blade and glass cleaner and it just seems to be stuck on there. So I'm hoping once the water's in there, I'll be able to sponge it off and scrape it off once it's got a bit wet. But for now, please excuse the sort of poorer quality footage from the sort of, yeah, the marks on the glass. It's not ideal, I know, but hey. So now that the soil is in the tank, I'm going to add the hardscape into this aquarium because I don't want, I want to create a barrier between the soil and the sand. And the rocks I'm going to be using is Dragonstone, which I haven't used before and always need a good clean. So I'm just going to get them soaking in some water and so I can brush off any loose sort of muddy clay material. So for the placement of the wood, I was thinking it was sitting there like somewhat like that. Um, although I think these three are a little too uniform, so maybe if I rotated it. Like that. And then add some dragonstone around the base here was the idea. Um, I think perhaps I need to just push some more of the soil behind and get this a bit higher up at the back. Um, but that was my idea. The other option was actually to go a bit more like that. 
and have more plants in that back corner, which I do actually quite like. Um, so I'm gonna have some, I'll, I'll go through the plant list in a second, but I'm gonna put the filter in this back corner and heat it and then have dense plant growth in front of that. So actually, perhaps having those bigger bits of wood, not straight up, looks a little bit better. Anyway, I'll play around with it and, and see what's what's best. I mean, the other option is to, to really rotate that round and have it come forward. I just don't think that's quite right. I think it needs to be potentially like this. So I haven't pre-soaked this wood at all. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it. So it's got a really nice flat base of wood on the wood. I'm gonna stick this flat base against a nice flat piece of slate. And in theory, that will then all be buried into the substrate and you won't be able to tell that there is a bit of slate in there. And no matter how I'm going to use this wood in the future, it's always gonna have this flat base hidden in substrate. So I'm not worried about ruining the reuse of this piece by sticking it onto this slate. So that's my plan first. I'm gonna use the standard technique with a bit of cotton wool and some super glue. Hopefully I've got enough of this moss super glue um, to, to stick this one down. So I'm now going to add some nature substrate from um, Aquaforest and this will sit underneath the deck of sand so that the few plants that I am going to be putting in the foreground will still have a nice nutrient rich base to grow in um, and this just always needs to be capped as quite clay and discolors and breaks up in the water. So the base of the hardscape is now done. I'm just going to um, add some sand in. So I have washed this sand, so it might make a bit of a mess.
So I'm not overly happy with the sand and the dragonstone. I think it's, I should, maybe should have put the sand in first and the dragonstone on top so it's a bit more imposing. So what I'm actually gonna do, uh, what I wouldn't normally do, is actually slightly fill this up to level out the sand under water. It should just wash away some of the rocks a bit. And then I can siphon out some of that water before planting. So I think that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, yeah, not ideal. Uh, this corner is actually really hard to get to and when I'm trying to film as well, it's really difficult to, to, to get the scape in and right. But yeah, I think I should have put all the substrate in, then the rocks, then the wood around that and find it really difficult to get it all to position. So in my opinion, I think this is already looking so much better without so much sand covering the rocks. I think this one here just needs to be lifted up ever so slightly. And I want that channel in there to build up a bit more. Too narrow for that. Fill some sand in there. So I just filled up this tank just with a little bit of water and then drained it back out just to the, so I could see sort of the, how the sand was sitting around the rocks. When I put it in, I was really struggling to get it off. I, with wet sand, I couldn't use a little brush to, to brush it off the rocks. So I just filled it up with water to wash it all down and get it all into place. Um, I'll grab the camera and show you up close. I think I need a few more little detailed stones, but overall I think this could be a really nice little uh, layout. So I've tried to block off the sand and Awaza plant soil with the rocks. There's a little gap there, but nothing too major. Um, but there's quite an open space here for planting botanicals. But I think a few little detail stones would look quite nice as well. The only thing I'm concerned with is maybe I need a bit more height in the rock work, um, just because there is obviously quite a high tank and the wood gives it quite a nice bit of height but this rock work is quite low down so maybe if i just raised up this stone a little bit so i think now my hardscape is finished i'm quite happy with how it's looking um it's time to now unbox my plant delivery from aquarium gardens see what i've got and get planting so that's the next job so here's my box of live plants let's get it open and see what's inside i mean i know what's inside because i ordered it but you guys don't it's very well packaged everything's wrapped up nicely So, first of all, this should be a in vitro pot. I think it's Tropical 1 2 Grey. It most certainly is. And it's the Dwarf Sag. So, hopefully, that is going to be in and around the rock work, giving a sort of patchy green, green sort of grassy look. So, that's the first one. And then in here should be. Elio Caris Monte, Montevedensis? I don't know how you pronounce it. There's some Elio Caris. That's like the, the sort of taller Elio Caris, which will look really nice in the back, give a nice grass effect. And then in here, should be some epiphytes. And something else. Yeah, so we've got a. Perfect. So we've got Anubius Nana Bonsai, Beastlandia, 
Bufusa Phalandra, um, Thea, Lobelia Cardinalensis Dwarf, and a Hygrophilia Lancia, which is going to be to fill in some gaps up in the Zebrafish tank. And it isn't actually for this scape. So my plan is, is to have the Sagittaria and the Lobelia in and around the foreground, and then have the Eleocaris in the back left corner around the filter. I'm also going to plant some um, Limnophilia Cetophora from my plant farm tank, take some cuttings and put that in and amongst the Eleocaris at that back to give a different texture. I'll then cover the sort of, well, I say cover, I've only got a pot of each, but have some little patches of epiphytes in and around the wood and the rocks to add some detail. And then going to have the sort of botanicals strewn all over the areas around where they are planted. I'm going to do that in sort of a few weeks time, I think maybe a week's time, just because I'm going to do lots of water changes in the following week because I'm using some aquarium soils that's going to potentially leach out some excess nutrients. So I want to make sure I don't get massive of algae growth. So I'm not going to bother adding in tannins and botanicals until I've done all those big water changes because I'm just going to strip all of them back out again. And I really do want a bit of a tint to this tank, I think. But maybe when it's planted, I, I, I decide I don't want, actually want to go down the route. Maybe it will look really great without, without the botanicals and I won't do that. But anyway, let's prep these plants. This Anubius is so luscious and dense in growth. It's a really nice, nice quality pot, as is this uh, piece of land. Look at how, how many leaves, how healthy it's looking. It's really nice. And then the yellow carrots, this is a plant that I've really wanted to keep for a long time. And if it grows well for me in this scape, I can imagine it popping up in a lot of my tanks in the future, because it's just got such a natural look and is appropriate for so many of the biotope inspired aquariums that I would love to create in the future. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing how this one grows. As you can see, it's just in really good quality. So that is the Elio Caris and the Epiphytes all prepped and ready to plant. Uh, I'm just going to take some trimmings, I think, of the Limnophilia Tessifora as well, so I can do all of the background plants at the same time. Starting to get some greenery in there. Um, not much to say really. Actually quite a lot of epiphyte for two plants. More than enough for what I needed. I'm not sure about this one here. This might be a bit too central to the scape. Um, it's a bit too high, but there was just an ugly patch of the wood here that I was going to try and hide. So we'll see how it grows in. I can always remove it if it doesn't look quite right and it's too high up. I think hopefully once the background plants grow up a bit, it will become more blended in with the greenery back there and look a little less weird. I've not fixed any of the hardscape, uh, any of the epiphytes to the hardscape. I've just pushed them into gaps. I'm fully expecting some of them to float. So that's going to be one of those things that I'm just going to have to wedge back in. I don't actually have any more glue, so I couldn't stick it if I wanted to.
So that is the planting I think done. I do have some dwarf sag left which I'll put into the plant farm tank and then I can make another tank with it. There's so many plants in those one two row pots but I didn't know how much I needed so I just thought I'd get one anyway. Um, time to fill this up and expect all the plants to start floating and then I, I'll just pop them back in. Um, yeah, time lapse of filling up the tank I guess. So the tank has now been filled, I've just got to put a filter and a heater in there um, and let it clear up a bit. It's a little bit hazy but not too bad. Um, I'm quite pleased with it, although I actually think it's probably not going to suit a botanical method aquarium. It may have gone too heavy on the plants. I probably should have just done the dwarf sag and no lobelia and probably only one of the bucephalandra or the anubius. I think it might be a bit too green um, for a botanical. So perhaps maybe not a wild better, um, but we'll see how it turns out in a few sort of days or so, I suppose. Um, I'll get the filter in and the heater in so they are in warm water and keep them sort of keep some surface agitation there for gaseous exchange. Um, and then yeah, water changes probably daily, I think. So I've now added a small filter and a heater to get the tank cleared and up to temperature. And I've left it a few hours for that to happen. As you can see, it's now cleared up a little bit better. Um, what I am going to do is just to add some floating plants at the top. I'm thinking some salvinia, um, just to block some of that light while these plants get established. There's also some of the uh, lobelia down here is just sort of being caught in and around the Anubis, so I'm just going to try and flip the leaves over so they look a little bit better. So I've got some Salvinia over in this tank, so I'll just grab a small handful of that, making sure I don't transfer over any algae. There's that. And then just some tweezers and try and Look, they're not going to move without being dug up. I will just pop that properly in. So yeah, that's the aquarium done. Um, let me know what you think of the scape. And yeah, hopefully it grows in really nice. I really want that um, Elio Karras to really reach up to the top of the tank and block some of the view of the filter. It's unfortunate with the nano aquariums, you, you do tend to have these equipments on, on in view. On view? In view. Uh, whichever way. Uh, perhaps the hang on the back would have been better, but this is what I had already, so I'm just going to use this to save a bit of money. And thanks so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed this little scape. Um, I apologise if the footage isn't the best. It's tucked away in the corner and it's not the easiest to film and get in there and do what I needed to do. So it was a bit of a balancing act there. But hopefully, hopefully the audio is a lot better than the, the sort of actual video.